Um, let's see. Uh, how many of you know Raspberry Pi? Heard about it, but uh, curious to know what it is. Little knowledge about it. Okay. Raspberry Pi is a, just a cheap computer. It's just a cheap computer. Anything is just a computer which is available. Don't think that it is a hardware. You have to code on top of it. It's so tough. I don't know what language. I don't know embedded C. Nothing. It's just a Linux computer. It's if you you should need a Linux computer. Uh, suppose if you have a li Amazon web server, what is it? It's just a Linux system, right? It's you get a putty shell access to it, you run your uh, services on that, you get a server. So Raspberry Pi, it's a 35, just $35 computer. It has a 512 MB RAM, 700 megahertz. You can connect a HDMI output. It has a, t I have a Raspberry Pi. This is how a Raspberry Pi looks. So it has an HDMI output. It has an Ethernet, so you can connect your uh, internet and uh, internet, and uh, it has a video output. You can connect your old TVs, also RCA TVs, and audio output 3.5 mm jack, uh, just uh, audio 3.5 mm. And then this is the memory card. This is where your operating system or your hard disk of this runs, and the processor and the RAM, everything is there in this system. It's uh, just a mini system, and the, that is the configs of the system. It has two USB ports. One I have used for Wi-Fi. I'll come to that. So this has two USB ports. So this is a Wi-Fi dongle. It doesn't come with a Wi-Fi adapter. So just for the, to make it cheap, people don't put the Wi-Fi in this module so that uh, uh, it's just a requirement basis. I, in my home, I don't have Ethernet cable, so I use Wi-Fi for my network connectivity. So this is it. And then it has a 5 megapixel camera add-on also. So this is how the camera module looks. So I just put it in the Pi, then you'll have a camera also. That is also pretty cheap. It's a 5 megapixel and uh, HD video. And then uh, coming to the operating system on this, uh, you can put any operating system. It's an 8 GB memory card. Format the memory card, download. I'll come to the steps, how to install how to install it. You can run an Android, Linux Android OS, Firefox OS, Arch Linux, Chromium OS. I put a Raspbian OS in this. This is a Linux, which is optimized for Raspberry Pi. It's available free. So just have to take a GB memory card, put in your software, then put it in. It will automatically boot. Just two-step process. So OK, now I have a computer. Why do I need it? It's cheap and affordable. Any language can be coded. Other uh, pick, you must be knowing the PIC micro microcontrollers and other microcontrollers which you have done in the colleges. You have some memory mapping address from this place to this place, swap the variables, you write a piece of code in some other language. So it's very difficult, right? So this is also some, a computer which you can write Java, Python, Node, Node.js server, any language, C++, it, GC, it has GCC, run it, put write C, anything. So no need to learn any new. And uh, it is powered by 5 volt. The, it's just powered by this USB cable. Uh, so just plug in your USB cable, and uh, it's powered in, just for powering, not for any writing embedded language. So it just powers in. It's so easy. And uh, the main purpose why they launched Raspberry Pi was they want to take, the, uh, take a computer to places where computers are very costly. Imagine you get a $35 computer. Uh, this laptop cost me so much, but you can't afford it everywhere, right, to all the students. But for a $35 computer, you can take it to the schools, to the villages where they can afford it. So that is the main purpose. And then people started developing projects on it because it was uh, very compact so that they can embed it anywhere. So these are a few project ideas which will come later. I'll tell about it. OK. First, how do we set up the Raspberry Pi? Buy an HGB card, and there is a formatting tool. You can use Windows formatting tool also. And then there is a noobs. This is the link. Uh, they have just bundled all the operating system into one zip, so that when you put in the memory card with noobs, you select the operating system, whatever you want from the list. And then that gets installed, the other gets removed. They have done it like that, so it's uh, pretty easy. Extract the zip in the SD card, and then insert it in the Pi. For the first time when you use the Pi, you need a monitor. That is uh, very painful because many of us are like, we buy a Raspberry Pi, 
we don't know where to put it in we don't have a monitor we don't have a tv uh, which supports hdmi or uh, so some output display output but uh, so that has to first time when you can you have you have to have a monitor HDMI is supported? HDMI 1.3 or something. I have a 2 LED port. Yeah, you need an HDMI or yeah, you need an adapter which converts HDMI to any other format. Yeah. Which connects it to a laptop. Most of us have a laptop, right? But for the set, yeah, I'll show you how to do that. For the But for the setup, you need a first time setup, you need it because it's going to boot with the memory card. You need to select the option. After that, USB, everything works. Whatever you're telling is works. But initial setup, you need a monitor. So you connect the monitor, you'll get the options. Only one option you get, need to select, Raspberry Pi OS, and then everything installs. And then the I'm running a Raspberry Pi. I have a Raspberry Pi in this. It's running on this. It's inside. This is how it looks. This is a VNC server. I'm running from the Raspberry Pi. And you get a desktop, which has uh, everything. Uh, you can create folders. Just a Linux system, right? Here uh, you have a. Yeah. The val OK. Connectivity, I'm using Wi-Fi. This has a, I've, I have a Wi-Fi module in this also. Uh, this also, and the laptop is also connected. I know the IP address. so. So the f when you log in for the first time with the monitor, make sure uh, you connect to the Wi-Fi, manage networks, and add the Wi-Fi network. I've created an access point in my phone, this phone, and I'm connecting both in that. So just connect it. If once you connect it, the IP will be set. Go to terminal, and then uh, find out what's your IP. Note it down. That is static IP. Whenever you switch on your uh, Raspberry Pi and your mobile network together, the IP is always maintained. So you don't need a display after that, once you know the IP. Because it's a Linux system, right? So you don't need a display. Amazon Web Service doesn't give a display. It just gives you, gives you a SSH access. So once you get the display, go to Putty. I have the IP over here. Open. Pi. Default password is Raspberry. It's advisable. Don't change it. Here you get shell access. A server where you can write anything. You can install a Node server. You can write. You can install an Apache Tomcat server. Run jars. Run war files. It, uh, you have a camera. A camera can be accessed. But one of the beauty of the Raspberry Pi is it uh, has something called GPIO pins. The, there are 26 pins over here, if you can see. Uh, these are all called general purpose input output pins, and they give an output of 3.3 volt. OK, we discussed this. And they give an output of 3.3 volts, which can power an LED. But it can't power a motor, or it can't power your tube light or a fan. But it gives a output of 3 volts, and which can be controlled from the terminal. OK, so since you are able to get 3 volts from this, you can power a relay or you can power a transistor. I'll come to what it is. So OK, setting up, uh, we, in our demo, I'll show you how to do a small, uh, how to control an LED or how to do a home automation, how to control a fan. I'll just show you how it works. So. This Raspberry Pi stopped working. I don't know what is the reason. OK, this is a pin which you can take output from the Raspberry Pi. It's a 3 rupees pin so that you can take output from this. So this is how this is the pin's uh, uh, numbering. So it starts like this, 1, 2, 3, 4, and how much voltage you get, GPIO numbers. 7023, which you use for coding. So, does the mic work? Hello? No, right?
control to install large this GPIO these are the steps uh, <coughs> I'll share with you the PPT uh, this is the step that is a get repository where they have the commands to install how to control this GPIO pins so I've just followed these versions till here and then I built it okay I've downloaded it because it takes time for the demo during the download just just pull the git so gpio gpio is installed minus v okay so gpio was there so what happens is when i give why what is this raspberry pi is not working This Raspberry Pi stopped working, so I'm not able to show a demo. So fourth pin is five volts. No, Raspberry Pi still is not booting up. Okay. <laughs> See, uh, I've taken five volts from here, from the second pin. I just put that wire in the second pin, and then zero volts from here. So I can run a motor, a small motor, a toy motor over here. Huh. I'm just taking power from there. It it gives me five volts, and uh, uh, to power a motor, you just need to connect it to a battery like this, right? Instead of connecting to a battery, I'm giving it to the Raspberry Pi. So, next, what you do is you want to switch on and switch off this motor through the Raspberry Pi. Give the five volt, give the negative over here, one part of the negative over here, and then the other part of the wire, go give it to the Raspberry Pi's this number. Okay. So what happens is I'll try whether the Raspberry Pi has come up. Let's see. So what happens is, I set the Raspberry Pi 7 pin as out. So, okay. I'm setting the 7th pin as a, out, a pin which gives me a five, 3 volts output. The Raspberry GPIO mode 7 space out is, I've set the 7th pin as output mode. And then I can write 1 or a 0. If I write a 1, it will give me a 3 volt. If I write a 0, it will give me a 0. So what happens? So it, I'll, get, I'll be getting a 3 volt output from that pin. So the Raspberry Pi is inside this, so I'm not able to take it out. OK. Hmm. So you got the circuit diagram, right? battery is there, you connect it to a motor. So when the switch is on, the motor powers up. Instead of giving it through the switch, you give it to the Raspberry Pi. You give the Raspberry Pi the control and then switch it on using the Raspberry Pi's 7 pin. Okay. So now you are able to get 3 volts which is able to run a toy motor or an LED. 
what will you do if you want to switch on a light, a fan, with this Raspberry Pi? It's simple. Use uh, relays. Who knows? Ab who doesn't know about relays? Okay, a lot of people are there. So, a relay is. Okay, this is what we saw. I gave it to a motor over there instead of an LED, and then I switch it on. So a relay, relay is uh, something which can be powered with a low uh, power, like three volts or a five volts. This is a relay which costs thirty rupees. So how it works is, see, this is a coil, which a magnetic coil which works in three volts. So when I give three volts over here, the the coil gets power uh, magnetized and it pulls this switch. So it's an electronic switch. So what happens is, this is your battery. This suppose this is a 230 volt supply which comes from the fan, uh, from the power board and this is your uh, fan motor. And this is your Raspberry Pi. So the Raspberry Pi can power a relay but it can't power a motor. So I use a Raspberry Pi to power this relay. This relay coil activates in 3 volts, it pulls this switch. Once this pulls the switch, this circuit is complete. So this 230 volt over here doesn't affect the pi at all. So this is that um, relay, if you can, this has uh, 5 pins, one to switch it on and I give 230 volt and take it out in <coughs> one other pin. Yeah, see, look, this is a car which I built. This has a fire sensor in it. It has a camera also in it. I'll try to switch it on for you. I didn't pl have plans of showing this car, but uh, since that rascal just dropped me, I have to show it. Where is my rascal? Yeah, this is the uh, output from my car. Okay. Yeah, the video is loaded. Uh, this is an Android app. I can. I have a browser also. And uh, it has a fire sensor also, so if somebody has a lighter, they can check it out. <laughs> Let's see whether it works. Yeah, it works. From here. Yeah, it's a joystick. I built it two weeks back. I don't know if the battery is also there or not. So here. 
and then the controls uh, direction also. So, and if there is a fire, the notification will come up if there's a fire is there. So how I have built uh, this is there is a mobile power bank over here, which we use to charge the mobile, and then that is powering the Raspberry Pi, and then from the Raspberry Pi, GPI opens. I am running a motor. So I have a video on YouTube. Straight away to the pipe. Straight away to the pipe. I just have to switch on the pipe. This uh, I know the IP address of the Raspberry Pi, no? Uh, that's what I started. I set it as static. Yeah, I don't change. Camera module is twenty dollars. Twenty five dollars. Because uh, when I'm in office, I, g I use SAP's network. When I go home, I use some other network, but I don't have a monitor over there. So it doesn't keep switching the networks and get the same IP. So I constantly use my Android app. So when I'm here also, I can demo. You need a monitor. Because. Okay. I don't know. But so this is not working. And uh, I, th how I'm doing is uh, I'm running a node server on it. Anybody, uh, this node server is a simple uh, JavaScript server. It's like Apache Tomcat. Uh, it's a server where you just code the code in over there. So. It's a small piece of code. After installing, just copy paste this code into your Raspberry Pi, and then you're good to go. What happened? Anybody? And this PPT I have a, see, uh, this is the basic node server which I copied from the uh, website. And I've set a timer uh, which switches on the GPIO for, uh, after 500 milliseconds it keeps switching, switching on, switching off. I thought of showing it, but this Raspberry Pi didn't work. I thought of it showing it. See, uh, uh, how do I send commands from my mobile to my car? So you need something to integrate. Yeah. So in a node server, what you do is uh, you have to, you can't go and type GPIO slash write slash zero slash one. So in the node server, what I do is, if you can see, execute of this command. So when, when, when I get the hit on this IP, when the mobile hits this IP on the port 1337, so it goes into this function, JavaScript. So over here, I write this piece of code. So it just starts executing. So this is the script for a child process, how to execute the commands in node server, how terminal commands in node server. So write these two lines of code, then you can, ri you can run any command uh, using exec. So you can do shell scripting inside EXCC. So, and I've created, this is, a, this is how you send uh, from your browser. The XML HTTP request, uh, AJAX call, send it to this IP in this port, get request, and then it's done. You switch on your 
I've given a basic how to switch on an LED in this. I can share this PPT with you guys. Uh, I'll share my mail address. You can 